Alright. What's up guys? Russell with Two Trail Hikers here. So, I'm out in the camper today and I'm getting us prepped and ready for a trip up to Pisgah National Forest. Um, we're going to be headed up off the parkway to Mount Pisgah um, and going to probably camp about a week up there. It's another primitive campground similar to Cades Cove um, run by the National Forest Service versus National Park Service. Well, one of the things that we noticed in Cades Cove was the thermostat for the heat, it fluctuates big time. Um, I read different things online when trying to do some research on it. It could fluctuate five degrees. If the camper wasn't exactly level, it could fluctuate 10 degrees. If it wasn't calibrated correctly, it would fluctuate. So after doing some research, came down and decided to get the Honeywell Pro 1000. This is a heat only digital thermostat. Now it's rated at 24 volts, but we've only got 12 volts coming to the thermostat up here. But because this runs off of two AAA batteries, it will actually self power itself and function and operate our heat without any trouble. So what I'm gonna do is tag you along while I do the replacement on it. And the first process of it is to pop the cover off. Um, snaps off relatively easily. And then we've actually got two wires on this unit. There is a W and an R. And granted it's red and white. Great it's color coded, but not always will it be color coded. But what we're going to do is we've got the battery disconnected on the camper. So there's no power coming to this. And we're going to disconnect it just simply by unscrewing it and taking it loose. Now, I don't know how much wire they left me in here. Looks like enough that it's not going to fall back inside the wall. Uh, that's going to be a factor to keep in mind when you're replacing these. Is, you know, how much wire is going down inside the wall. And I did research too that some units have a combination thermostat that'll do AC and heat and you can actually change those out as well. So we're going to unscrew it. It doesn't seem to be screwed to the wall very well actually. All right. So we've got us unscrewed. We'll hold on to our screws just in case. And we're going to slide our wires out. Now, Judging from the looks of it, they've got something else run back there, but we got some extra lead wire here, which is great. Um, I'm actually kind of happy about that because one of the things I read online as far as the reviews and stuff went on doing this job was they were notorious for just leaving these really, really short and you just had a hard time dealing with them. So we're going to open up our Pro 1000. And in our Pro 1000, we obviously get our installation guide which is relatively self-explanatory. The actual thermostat itself uh, is simple, simple, super simple. Uh, basically, we have off and heat on the side and up and down for temperature control. And there is some programmable features inside of this to change as far as Fahrenheit to Celsius and if it's running on electric, if it's running on gas, stuff as far as that goes. But everything I read says it's set up automatically right out of the box. Install it, hook it up, it's good to go. Uh, also in the box comes the mounting hardware. Um, basically got two little blue tap cons and two screws. Don't know that we'll need those. It comes with Duracell batteries. Um, that's impressive. Most of the time when you get electronics that comes with batteries, they're usually an off-make brand of battery. Uh, they don't last very long. Around here, we kind of prefer Duracell. We use them at work, and they seem to do us well and last longer. The only other thing in the box is the actual operational manual. And definitely, by all means, please hang on to this, because this has all your programming abilities in it on how to set it. One of the features that I like about this thermostat is you can actually adjust this thermostat once you go into the settings and get it down to 35 degrees. So if we were parked somewhere and weren't necessarily inside of the camper and didn't want to winterize it, we could set this and it would actually keep the heat up inside of the camper and help, and I emphasize help, prevent the pipes from freezing. 
it's probably not going to guarantee it, especially some of the ones that are run outside. But at least we could keep it temperature wise enough to hopefully prevent it from freezing and busting inside if that was a situation where we couldn't winterize it. So we'll go ahead and get started on the installation. Um, on the bottom of the thermostat, it's a little application point where you can get your finger and you simply snap the back off of it. With the back off, what we've got to do is set us up on our wires through this opening and figure out how we want to mount it on the wall. Now, I'm kind of partial to wanting to cover up the existing holes and it looks like I can pretty well do that. Um, I think what we're going to do is take our screwdriver here and push this in because it looks like they might have put this on with maybe a, a drill or an impact driver or something to that extent and they just just about strip the holes out completely um, which is where the tap cons would have to come into play you'd have to use tap cons and the tap cons will hold probably better than just screws but it's not like we're going to be tugging and pulling we're more or less pushing against the wall when we're mashing the buttons on the thermostat and the switch on the side is it's relatively simple to click one way or the other so it's not going to have that much pressure on it so it's got an indicator on it that says up. I think it's relatively common sense if you look at it when you take it off of the actual thermostat itself. Now we'll use the screws that came out of the original thermostat once we get it lined up. do this without dropping everything. Screw this first one in. And probably the good thing about these thermostats is they don't have to be perfectly level. Um, basically all I'm going to do is get right here in front of it, situation it to where it looks straight up and down to me. Looks good. I don't see a problem with that. So now, put our second screw in. Just double check it before we tighten it down. Looks pretty good. Alright, so now, we'll reference back to our thermostat that originally came out and it looks like red is going to be our supply power that's going to our coil it goes over and closes and actually sends power out to the white wire and you can adjust the cycles here on this um, we didn't do anything with that the biggest thing that we noticed is when we were trying to use it we would try to get the temperature in here set to about 65. The heat would come on. It would run up to 70 degrees or more. And I mean, you'd have to open the door to cool it off in here. And it was just, it was really a waste of fuel and it was inconvenient. So that's what we're trying to eliminate is the inconvenience factor that we were dealing with, with having to constantly switch back and forth. Now it doesn't look like I've got a screwdriver that's going to fit these. So that being said, I don't have a tool in here to use to put the wires into the thermostat housing. So I'm going to pause this for a second, uh, run grab a micro screwdriver, and then I'll be back and we'll finish the video. Alright, I'm back with you. I got my micro screwdriver. And uh, we've got three terminals in the thermostat housing that we've got to attach two wires to. Um, it's labeled W and R, but I go back to what I said originally. Color codes don't always match. Don't go by the letters and don't expect that R is red and W is white. It could be the opposite. So what we'll end up doing is checking our instruction manual, which is wrote in, I don't know, four or five different languages. Uh, all right. So our white is our heat relay and R is our power. 
So on that unit, we need to supply 12 volts to the power supply. Um, what I've done is I went back and since I have these isolated, I've got the battery hooked up and I've got the cover off of our inverter to where I can access a ground point and then I'm using just a standard test light. Just a simple 12 volt test light. And we're going to check the white one and we have no power there. And we're going to come over and there's our red. So we've got our 12 volts. All right. Now, simple part is we're going to put this in. We're going to attach our red to the R, which is our incoming power supply. Once it's attached, nice and secure. Now we'll attach our white which is going to our heat relay. All right, got that nice and secure. Now I want to tuck this in so we don't have any possibilities of it binding or pinching, anything like that. So there's that. Now we've got our uh, two AAA batteries. We're going to install those in our thermostat. And keep in mind the power still hooked up. Um, since I figured out which is which, I knew I had to keep the red isolated. It couldn't touch anything. Uh, I don't necessarily recommend that unless you feel very confident in your skill set. But once we get our batteries installed, just like that, now what we'll do is clip this in. And we're installed. But we have no power. So gonna have to troubleshoot that. Alright, so back with you. We got our batteries installed. Didn't have the battery slid up all the way so it wasn't making contact so the display wasn't lighting up. Display is lighting up now showing the actual temperature inside of the camper. Uh, right now it says it's 69 degrees. So now we'll just line the slots up, snap us in place, click us to heat, we're set to 62, so we know it's 69. We'll bump it up to 70 and give it a second here and see if the heat cycle's on. And there it goes. Heat's on. Works like a charm. Quick and simple fix. Appreciate you watching, guys. Uh, if you like the video, please hit like. If you like more than one, definitely hit subscribe. We'll be coming to you with more.